Hi, it's John from Dino Spectrum. We were asked by somebody about some understanding of how they would take previous tuning knowledge from engines with port injection, like a Subaru or a Mitsubishi, and migrate that understanding to direct injection. So here goes. Direct injection can seem intimidating the first time you use it because there's a lot of confusing terminology and the waveforms used to control the direct injectors are very complex, the fuel pumps are not traditional. The injection pressures are typically about 40 times higher than port injectors and this gives better atomization and also a decent gradient to deliver the fuel because you're not just delivering it against the intake manifold pressure like with those port injectors, but in the worst case, you also have to deliver that against that multiplied by the compression ratio of about 10 to 1. So at 24 megapascals, which is a typical target on DASA, you've got eight times the pressure that you would have in the cylinder from the air. So you've got a good force with which to overcome it. The high pressure fuel pump is cam driven rather than electric and it's regulated to that 24 megapascal typical target by a solo valve that switches as the pump rotates with the cam and that opens and closes the fuel pump. Thankfully with DASA tuning and a lot of other direct injection modern engines we're only using homogeneous injection so typically we're running at cruise with a target of lambda 1 or 14.7 to 1 typically depending on the fuel and there isn't apart from some warm-up situations any split injection going on there isn't any lean burn and there's no miniature combustions in small pockets on top of the piston with stratified charges and so on so really you can think of it as pretty similar to port injections, just that the injection is delivered into the cylinder. And the great thing is with well with modern ECUs is that they run full-time closed loop. Lambda sensors that come on stream anywhere as quick as 10 seconds after a cold start. And if the fuel system has the capacity and you tell it what lambda you want at a particular load and RPM, you'll usually get it really quite well. The the pros of direct injection are that it gives considerable knock resistance even with high compressor and compression ratio engines and boost pressures. And this has been the big drive for downsizing engines, although some people have realised that running lots of boost on a small engine to try and get the acceleration of a larger engine can actually produce worse fuel economy. But anyway. Um, on the same engine, generally having direct injection compared with port injection will improve the fuel economy, even if you just use homogeneous injection. The limited flow capability is a problem, though, because the fuel pumps are expensive, precision manufactured, and the upgrades tend to still be of relatively poor availability or quite expensive, with a few exceptions. Reliability is also an issue of the injectors and fuel pumps, and some lower value old vehicles can even be written off due to injector failure. Some other riders actually need their engines removed to change their direct injectors if one of them decides to start leaking. Um, injector failure can of course damage engines as well. The main thing to think about when tuning is that there is a flow window for direct injectors. With a port injector, it doesn't really matter what the intake valves are doing particularly. At full throttle, you can spray through an open valve or you can spray onto the back of a valve. If you spray onto the back of a valve, some people prefer that because it actually atomizes the fuel quite well. But in reality, with a lot of tuned engines, your injector pulse width can be so high that you're spraying a lot of the time any anyway. And, you know, at full throttle, the port injector time is not really so sensitive. In direct injection though it's completely different because you can only really spray for up to about half of the engine cycle. If you go too early then your fuel will go through the exhaust valve and cause smoke emissions. If you go too late you will still be spraying and impinge on the ignition and cause a misfire. 
the ECU usually just uses a single injection and it's at the start of injection timing and it doesn't really do anything if it goes too late. I think this is because the factory ECU uses such short, direct injection pulses because it runs so little boost. They never really envisaged that people would be getting their end of the injection late enough to impinge on the ignition and so instead they just have lamp modes in case the fuel pressure goes too low which would really be the only reason that the injection would last too long. Depending on your valve timing and overlap and so on and it's important to bear in mind that this is a dynamic system with flow in and out it isn't a hard cut off but you may be able to use 400 degrees before top dead centre for 40 degrees before top dead centre to do a direct injection without causing excess smoke or emission. So even then that 360 degrees between 40 and 400 is only half of the 720 that we have available. So even though the direct injectors are relatively large compared to the uncorked injectors, if you can only use them for half the time then you will have some limitations. Potentially we have the intake and the compression strokes, but only those in which to inject. And that depends obviously on valve and ignition timing. When we data log, uh, I'll show you data log in a moment, um, you can watch the high pressure actual and the target and make sure that that's behaving. You can also see that delivery window that the high pressure fuel pump solenoid is, is controlling. And that's typically up to 98 and a half degrees on DESA. That can be adjusted and we haven't tried that. Generally on other platforms, adjusting that delivery window up or down doesn't really seem to make much difference. That maximum is set for the highest efficiency that the pump can manage and, and it is a maximum that's only needed when it's really needed. The injector pulse width is adjusted based on fuel pressure. So if the fuel pressure crashes, the injector pulse may not really long. And this works on a square root basis. So you can see the math down here. If you have half normal fuel pressure, it's quite common with, with some dazzlogs to see the fuel pressure crash into 12 megapascals if you're trying a bit too hard on the direct side with lots of ethanol. So you could have the square root of that half, which is about 0.7 times the normal injection quantity, so then you have to go 41% longer to make up for that. E85 already needs about 40% longer anyway, so you can see these things all add up, and often you're just out of boost. Um, subsequent talk, we will cover port injection and blending, but for now I want to switch to a data log to show you some of the values we've been talking about and then we'll close. Uh, this data log is here showing engine speed and gear. You can pull down the left hand side the things that you want to see, but I'm going to go to scatter plots here to show you some relevant things to the high pressure fuel pump lambda and injectors. Uh, in this scatter view, you have an X versus Y view, and I've already selected engine speed for these two plots here. So, what I'm going to do is uh, hit H to find HPO actual, so this is the actual high fuel pressure plotted against RPM for this entire log, and on the graph next to it we'll do the high pressure fuel target. At the bottom here you can see the green RPM going up through a couple of gears, and we can put points on here and it will also show at the top, so you can see we've got 24 actual, 24 target, and all this is quite well controlled. You know, see the red line here, there's no particular dips during gear changes or at high RPM. Um, everything's behaving itself. You can see the delivery angle of the high pressure pump that I was talking about here. Again, you can click these values here. They're all below 98.5. Sometimes you'll see it going up to 98.5 when the high pressure pump is really working hard. But in this case, we've blended in enough port injection just to keep the high pressure pump and injectors happy but we're delivering quite a lot of our fuel through the direct injectors here for best performance. If we switch to lambda again we have the same concept of an actual and a target so let's find the lambda 
actual and the lambda set point of target. So you can see this solid block here. We've got target 0.821 or target 0.82, and it's actually this flat yellow line all the way through these poles. That's just the way we've set it there. And you can see that it's fairly close with the red line going around it, and that's a sort of a normal excursion that you'd expect. You can see the adjustments that the system is making to try and achieve this target. If you go to lambda short term fuel trim, and these values here should be scattered around one, and in this case, you can see from the red line that they are throughout all engine speeds throughout this pool, they're all within a couple of percent, five percent at the extreme from neutral, which means that based on the air that's being estimated and measured going into the engine, based on the fuel, based on the ethanol, based on the flex fuel, everything's working correctly and we're not using fuel trims to make excessive corrections to our lambda control. You can also see the ethanol content in this plot as well, which is 81% through this plot. Okay. Um, finally, let's look at injectors. We're interested in the direct injectors here. In this case, these two are just the same. On the four litres, we report the injector pulse width on all eight cylinders because they are programmed to be different because it's got a funny exhaust manifold. But on DASA, the factory put them all the same. So if you log one injector pulse width on DASA, they should all be the same. So uh, it's called injector pulse width number one because the system does a single injection. So here you can see six and a half milliseconds here at 5200 rpm reducing to just under six milliseconds at high revs now those that tuned a port injection car will probably know off the top of the head that at 6000 rpm you have 20 milliseconds available for port injection we were saying earlier that you'd had an you'd have an absolute maximum of half of that on direct injection, but that would be pushing it. So you can see here at 6,000 RPM that the injector pulse here is 6.2, 6.3 milliseconds, which is reasonable. Certainly I wouldn't want to be pushing it to 10 because then you're really having to inject quite early and worry about impinging on it being late. And in this setup, uh, we were quite happy that with a port injection, we didn't need to go any harder on the direct injection. So we'll go over port injection in a later video. Thanks very much.